So I thought it might be quite fun just to do a bit of a mag light video. Uh, mag light's one of those iconic flashlights or torches, uh, depending if you're UK based or US. Um, but probably every household either has or has owned uh, a mag light at some point. And they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, I admit the modern range I don't own quite so many of. Um, but they are one of those torches that, you know, always sort of feel at home uh, when you're using. There are better torches out there, um, but they're kind of fun to have a go with. So I thought I'd bring some out tonight and just sort of demonstrate the differences between some of them. Um, so down here we've got a couple of solitaires. Um, so this one here is actually an original uh, Incan one. Uh, just running a, an Eneloop AAA battery. Uh, very well worn. It's been well used. Uh, the one next to it, while it looks identical, is actually a, a Gen 1 LED solitaire. Um, I believe it uses an Osram uh, LED, 37 lumens. Um, they don't make this one anymore. I think there's a, a newer 47 lumen version out there. Um, but we can sort of show the, the differences between them. Uh, got a little AAA mini mag here. Um, this is actually an original incandescent one, um, but we've got an LED drop-in in this. Uh, just a cheap one bought off of uh, eBay. Um, it's nothing like the ones they actually do sell now, but uh, again, a good good comparison. Um, this one here has been customised. Um, so there was a, a, a user on the Budget Light Forum uh, who did a giveaway, um, and they actually built this one. Um, it's got a, a tear optic, uh, and it's a direct drive running on a single uh, 10 440 battery, so a lithium-ion AAA battery, essentially. Uh, a bit of fun make a short run time on it um but we'll have that out for some comparison um probably my favorite mag light uh the xl 200 here um so this is an early version i believe it's got a cree xpe led in it about 180 lumens um i think the one they sell currently has got about 200 lumens i'd imagine it's something like a, a cree xpg uh two in, in in the current version or something along those lines um, we've got a few mini mags, um, so actually we'll go, the blue mini mag, this is uh, an incandescent mini mag, um, but this is also running a, a, um, a drop-in, I can't remember the make of it now, um, it's quite a, quite a popular drop-in back in the day, and um, it's actually running a Cree XRE, um, it's not overly powerful, uh, and it just slots into where the, uh, the, the original incandescent bulb holder was. Um, the silver one, um, I actually bought this on holiday in Sarasota, Florida a few years ago. I think it's a Pro Plus, a single mode. I think it was rated at something like 245 lumens. Um, so I'll give that one a go. Something just to pick up on on the mini mags. I mean, as you can see, the LED version is significantly bigger than the older version, um, which I think it's a shame. You know, in, in the modern day, uh, the mini mag itself was pretty big to put in your pocket um but to make it even bigger you know it's just not really a, a very good edc torch these days um i'm surprised that maglite haven't addressed this i'd love to see them do a one aa sort of mini mag sort of half the size um you know of a modern um boost driver in there and uh, there's no reason they couldn't do that and still get some good performance and um, this flashlight here a bit of an odd color um, it was originally black, um, but it's, uh, I baked it. Uh, it changes the colour of the, the anodising uh, to this sort of brown colour. We've got a, an aftermarket clicky switch on here. And if we look at the other end, we'll also see we've got a tear optic. Um, so this has actually been quite heavily modified. So in there, we've actually got a P60 drop-in. Um, so if you, know, if you know what a Surefire is, um, or a Solar Force, um, there's such a thing as a P60 drop-in. Uh, it's just the uh, the drop in minus the, the reflector um, yeah, is in there. You have to um, bore the head out uh, to make the drop in fit. And we're running uh, two 14500 lithium ion batteries in this one. Um, I think the switch and the general setup limits the power of it a little bit, um, but it's still quite an impressive little torch. Uh, so moving on to the larger mags, um, got a, a 2D here. Um, again, this is one that I, I baked. It was originally a black torch. You can see we've got some, some different colour anodising uh, on it where, where it was baked. Um, so this torch here uh, was an original incandescent 2D. 
Um, although I've modified the, uh, the spring and the tail cap and we're actually running two 26650 lithium ion batteries in here. Uh, and we've got an aftermarket uh, a reflector and pill and we've got a Cree uh, MTG2 in there. Um, at the moment this runs direct drive. Um, you know, it could be a real monster, but um, I think the switch and the wiring sort of hold it back a little bit. So it's actually quite sensible to use. Um, um, but it's quite, quite nice. It's got a lovely uh, colour tint and CRI on that one. Um, we've got a 3D mag. Um, this one I've owned since oh, probably the late 80s or very early 1990s. It was uh, given to me by my parents. First pro proper mag light. Um, it's still got 3D cells in it. Uh, and we're actually running a household bulb. Uh, I can't remember what they're called now, uh, MR41 or something like that. Uh, but basically you can run these direct drive. It's not very powerful, um, but it lasts basically forever on 3D cells. The runtime is tremendous. Uh, and in the house, it makes quite a nice night light. You know, if you want to get up in the night and just uh, see your way around the household or something, it's not really much of an outdoor light, um, but it's nice to be able to keep the old mag light usable. Um, here we've got a, a, a mag charger. Um, so this I bought originally probably about 2001, 2002. Um, it's still running the incandescent bulb, standard reflector. Um, I know there's some things you can do to these. I do have some bigger bulbs, but you have to um, open up the reflector to put a, a bigger bulb in these. Um, it's a nice torch. Uh, the only difference is uh, the original uh, nickel cadmium battery pack has long since expired. So I'm actually running this on any loop uh, double A's um, and we've got them in series and parallel in here. Uh, so we're running slightly higher voltage um, than a, a original mag charger would have done. Um, it would be nice just to see a bit of a comparison, um, you know, on what an incandescent bulb can still do. And last up is my 6D. Huge, great big tank of a, of a flashlight. Um, so again, this one was bought for me by my parents, probably around 1994-ish, uh, maybe a little bit before. Um, it's had a lot of use over the years. Um, so it's it's no longer incandescent. Um, we've got another drop-in in this one, um, which comes as a reflector uh, and a pill with a, with a driver built in. Um, we've got an XML2 down in there. Probably can't see it very well in this light here. Um, so you do lose the focus, um, you know, um, as it, as it drops in, it just plugs into the into the bulb socket. So we've got the standard switch on here. Uh, I'm also running this on six AAs in AA to uh, D cell adapters. Um, uh, again, same new, uh, any loops makes it a lot lighter. Runtime's still good on it. It's not it's not anything like what a, a D cell would be, but um, at least this way you're not going to have uh, batteries leaking in it. Right, so we'll go and have a go and see what they're like in the dark. So here we are with the little solitaire incandescent and the screen is completely black and that's because this thing is such low output. Um, it really is amazing at how little light these things put out. Um, I mean, let's see, you might just be able to identify we've got a car wheel there. Um, and don't get it wrong, you know, it's a lovely warm light and the tint is quite good. Um, I can see a little bit more with the naked eye uh, than what you can probably see on the camera. Uh, but the beam is full of artefacts. Uh, and really just, you know, it's, it's not that great, to be honest. Um, but it's what we used to have. And, you know, we didn't know any different. Um, having said that, this is actually quite a nice little torch to have by the bed or under your pillow. You know, if you're trying to preserve your night vision... Um, you know, it's, it's pretty good at doing that because it isn't too bright, um, but it is enough light if you're in total darkness just to be able to sort of find your way and sort of see what you're doing. Um, but, you know, beyond sort of three or four feet, it, it, it really is pretty much useless. Um, not too bad, perhaps if you're looking at a map or something. Um, but of course, the solitaire is silent operation. Um, you just twist the head, so again, that's quite nice to use in the middle of the night. 
Uh, some of the clicky switches on, some torches are quite loud. Um, if your partner's a light sleeper, uh, they may not welcome that so much. Um, so yeah, low output, nice colour, um, but perhaps, uh, you know, has had its day really. So onto the LED version of the same light and immediately, wow, what a difference. What a difference. Um, I have to say, in terms of AAA lights, uh, I actually really, really like the, uh, the little solitaire LED. Um, it's quite throwy for its size. You know, I think that's that Osram LED. It's quite small. Uh, it doesn't have a dome on it. Um, I think the new ones probably aren't going to be as good. Um, but I mean, look at this. You can see quite clearly, standing back, it's lighting the car up nicely. You can see it on the camera. You know, you could find your way quite happily down a dark road um, with such a little torch. Uh, run times are pretty good on it as well. Uh, and the colour tint's nice. Uh, I really must get myself one of the newer 47 lumen versions to, to compare to. Um, but I fear I would be disappointed. Um, this light has been a, a keychain light and a backup light for me for, for many years. Uh, hence the anodising has uh, nearly worn off. Um, but it really is a nice little torch. Uh, you know, it's a full props to Maglite for doing this. Um, but again, where is the 1AA Solitaire? You know, AAA is fine, but, you know, it's a AAA. If this was a 1AA, just scaled up slightly, so it would be a little bit taller, perhaps, a little bit fatter, but much better runtime, much better output. You know, it would be absolutely cracking. You know, and if they had better provision for a pocket clip, um, you know, as you can see on, on, on my old incandescent one, I have managed to get a pocket clip on it. But, you know, come on, Maglite. It's not 1990 anymore. Get with it. So here's my uh, AAA Mini Mag. So this one's running an aftermarket drop-in. Um, as we can see, um, it's, it's, it's okay. But it's it doesn't even match the solitaire. Uh, probably got a bit better runtime. We've got two batteries in there, uh, and while you can't see so much on the camera, uh, the tint on it is very blue, very very much what you used to get with the these drop-ins. Um, I'm not really sure what the LED is. Um, it was one of those little uh, sort of crappy LEDs, look a bit like the the incandescent bulbs you find in a mini mag. Um, but the, uh, the the AAA mini mag is a really nice size. Uh, but again. No provision for a pocket clip. Makes it really hard to sort of carry it in your jeans pocket. Um, so even though they're a nice size, you know, they're, they're still not my go-to torch anymore. So let's have a look at this uh, custom one. This is a, a mini mag as well. So I say this was built by a, a member on uh, the Budget Light Forum. Direct drive. I think it might even be an XPG2 in there. Neutral white. Uh, lovely tint, <laughs> really impressive output for such a tiny little light. Um, but yeah, the, the, the run times are horrendous. Um, it really is a, a showpiece light rather than uh, something you're really actually going to carry and use. Um, but that, that's all it was ever meant to be. So a bit of fun, but it just kind of shows you what these small packages can do. Um, it's got a nice big copper uh, pill that's been custom built in there. So it handles the heat. Uh, basically, the battery runs flat before it gets too hot. Um, but a, a, bit, a bit of fun nonetheless. Now, probably onto my favourite mag light, the XL200. Oh, I love this thing. It, it's a cracking little light. Um, it's very pocketable. Um, this particular example, I do have the plastic uh, accessory pocket clip on it, which makes it very, very easy for pocket carry. Um, the XP... So I think it was an XPE in these. Really throwy little beam on it for, for a little torch that's only making 180 lumens. You know, it, it actually throws that beam really, really well. As you can see, it's just lighting up the car nicely. Um, again, I would say the quality of the beam in terms of tint isn't great. Um, it looks good on the camera, but in reality, it's a bit blue. Um, I think that's a shame. Um, I love the modes on this XL200. Um, if you've not 
if you're not familiar with this flashlight um check out my re my review of it i'll go into more detail um, but basically it's got an electronic switch uh, and it's got a motion sensor in it so if you double click oh, i can do it while i'm on camera oh i'm getting a strobe actually So if you click and hold, um, and then literally you just rotate the light in the air backwards and forwards like a dial, and it adjusts the brightness. Um, very nice UI. Um, only really a few complaints with this light. Um, because it runs on three AAAs, um, the runtime is pretty poor compared to a good 18650 light, um, despite the fact it's got very similar dimensions. I would love it if Maglite made it so that you could run it on either battery source. Um, you know, I think that'd just be a win-win for everybody. You know, sell it so it runs on three AAAs for most people. And if you, you've got 18 650s, make it so you can put one of those in. Um, I like the dimming effect on it. Although I would say when you do dim it down, so if we can get this to, to demonstrate on the camera, um, we do get the, uh, the, the, the sort of dreaded sort of, PWM uh, it's not too bad I've seen worse lights but you know it would be nice if that was a, a little bit better uh, and maybe it is on the newer ones I think if I wobble the light there you can just see some lines appearing on the screen um, you know it's a bit, a bit of a shame uh, and I think probably the biggest downside to this and um, I don't know if it's the same with the XL50 I've never owned one of those is because it's an electronic switch on this um, if you leave it with batteries in, it will go flat. It is no good as a backup light that you can leave in a, a glove box of a car or in a drawer, uh, unless you're going to unscrew the tail cap for quite a way. Um, but I would say out of all my mag lights, this is the one that I probably use the most. Um, I do EDC it quite regularly. Um, so despite its flaws, the beam is just actually really nice. I like the fact it's quite, quite throwy and got a reasonable spill beam to it. Um, and it's just so easy to use. And the electronic switch, I don't know if you can hear it on here, is really quiet. Um, which again, makes it really nice at night to be able to use. Um, so, you know, if you, if you remember to turn it down when you go to bed, then if you need to use it, you just turn it on and it's got near silent operation. Um, you know, and it, uh, just it, it's the little things that make a difference when you're when you're using a flashlight. So yeah, XL two hundred, really recommend those. Right, so on to the mini mags. Um, so first up, if I can find it in the dark. So this is my incandescent mini mag. Uh, again, this is one I've owned for, for many, many years, um, probably about 20 years. Um, you know, I like the mini mags. Um, I've got a pocket clip on this, but again, there's no there's no groove for a clip to stay in place. It's the official mag clip that I found you have to, to end up inverting and putting up near the head, but then it just makes it bulky to carry because it sticks out of your pocket. Um, I just wish Maglite would think a little bit more about everyday carry um, this particular drop in allows you to focus still so it's just a, the twist head uh, and yeah uh, and it turns on and off um, I did find that the uh, the drop in doesn't allow you to to focus very well so despite the fact this is a, an XRE um, you know which is sort of renowned for its its throwing ability we've actually got quite a large hot spot um, and again the tint Mm, it's pretty blue it's, it's not that great uh, the camera really flatters it here I think um, but it's not bad performance you know uh, these drop-ins are, are pretty ancient um, I yeah, can't remember night eyes or something like that made them um, they were quite popular at one stage um, pretty cheap uh, you know if you've got some old mini mags they're, they're a great great way of uh, revitalizing them um, and you know, it's probably doing better out here than the camera's showing. Um, you know, it's, it's letting me light up stuff pretty well. Um, especially closer to, I mean, look at that. It's, it's lighting up the vehicle really, really well. 
Um, I think they do get a little bit hot. It's basically a driver on a board that just slots into uh, uh, where the bulb would go. Um, and I think the power tends to drop a little bit as they heat up. Um, but, you know, it's pretty pretty good still. Um, I think what we should really do is a direct comparison against a, a modern Maglite LED. So, so I think this is the uh, 245 lumen one. Um, and you can see it just lights up stuff better. We've got much better longer distance on it. Um, it's quite a nice light, uh, the, the uh, AA mini bag. Um, so I think this is a Pro Plus. Um, I know they do some, a few different versions, so I think up to about 350 lumens these days. Um, this is quite nice. This has got the uh, the slow ramping, so it turns on bright and then it will uh, slowly dim. Whereas the, the XL200, uh, the program on that makes it stay bright for a longer period of time and it steps down rather than sort of slowly dimming. Uh, I'll be honest, I think I prefer that. Um, this one you'll be using it for a while and you can cause it's a bit dim. And you sort of realise it's dropped down, so you have to cycle it by turning it off and then back on again and you're back to full power. Um, but my biggest gripe with the, the LED mini mag is the size. You know, it's about an inch longer than the, the, the classic uh, incandescent one. Um, beam on here, it's pretty good. Um, got a reasonably tight hotspot. It will sort of go a little bit floody. Um, and then you can sort of focus it in a bit. Um, but it is, there's not really a lot of variance there. You know, it's, it's basically kind of on or off. Um, uh, and that's about all you're going to get. Um, again, it's a bit cold white. I wouldn't say it's blue, but, but definitely a very cool white beam. Um, I think the white balance on the camera, again, sort of flatters it um, to make it look a little bit better than it actually is. Um, but they're, they're quite nice little lights. For somebody who doesn't want to go to lithium iron, you know, they're still worthy of buying. Right, so we'll go on to the D-cell mags now. Um, so I think we'll start off with the D3. I say this is running a, a, a triple optic. It's actually a, a household bulb. Uh, there was a little bit of a craze. Ooh, must have been six, seven years ago, maybe longer. Might have been even 10 years ago. Uh, on the on the flashlight forums where you could modify these um, just with your household bulb and direct drive them um, so we've got quite a warm tint on this one it, it is a bit yellow um, but as you can see it's quite a nice floody beam definitely not a distance beam you know if we go out and try and shine at the same trees we were earlier um, I can just see with the naked eye it's lighting up something um, but there's absolutely no chance on the camera uh, that you're going to see that um, but I say the runtime on this thing is is monstrous. Um, I'll be honest, these D-cell batteries have been in this flashlight for four years, maybe five. Uh, they are Duracell Pro cells, um, but this thing has been used a lot. And it just hasn't dimmed at all, um, which is kind of why I've left it. You know, this, this actually lives next to the bed. Um, you know, so if I need to get up in the middle of the night, I've got something that I can just find my way around the house. Um, and that's absolutely ideal for that. Um, but I say, it's, it's not an outdoors light, um, not even remotely. My 2D, on the other hand, a bit of a different kettle of fish. So we're, we're running the Cree MTG2. So that's a, a very large LED, if you're familiar with that. And look at that. Wow, what a difference. It's like stadium lighting. Um, Again, this is, this is no thrower. It's, it's far more of a flutter still. Um, we've got a huge hot spot. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's just lighting up everything close up. Uh, we've got a really nice big spill beam. Um, and, you know, the throw's not bad on it, really, for, for what it is. Uh, we can light stuff up a little way down the road here. Um, it, it's a fun light, this. And uh, I believe this was a 4000K. LED uh, and the tint on it is, is probably my favourite tint out of any LED light I own. And I probably own about 100. So I say, no driver on this one. It's just on or off. Um, I think you could definitely get more lumens out of it in a, in a better setup if you were 
running a better switch than the uh, the standard incandescent D cell mags, uh, and probably beefed up the wiring a bit as well. Um, but I haven't got a whole heap of heat management in here. It, it's just a copper pill in an aluminium reflector. Um, it's kind of hard to get the heat transfer to the body of the uh, of the actual mag light. So, but it's nice. It's nice. It's a good usable light. So let's go retro. Let's get the incandescent mag charger out. I love this light. So this normally lives in my Land Rover. I have the uh, the charging cradle attached to the dashboard. Um, and there we can see, again, we've got quite a nice uh, color tint, you know, that incandescent bulb, just totally different to, a, to an LED. Uh, and we've got a good hot spot on this, but the thing to notice is, well, we just don't have the spill beam at all. The spill is very, very dull. Let's see, even if we get up really close, you can see we just don't have a huge amount of light coming out of this thing. Despite the fact we're running higher voltage um, than you'd normally get with one of these. Um, but what we do have is actually a beam that is really quite throwy. Now you probably can't see it so well on the camera, but this actually does shine up and light objects away quite far, um, all things considered, um, the output on it. It's just you're not lighting up much of an area at a time. Um, but the reason I still use it is the fact that actually it produces enough light and it's a bit of fun. Um, I have thought about putting an LED module in it uh, or even upgrading to a new LED mag charger. But, you know, I've got other, lot, other lights that will do that. And it's just nice to keep this running an incandescent bulb, really. So, apart from the little solitaire light, this is the only incandescent light that I still use. Everything else is LED. So maybe that's a testament to MAG, that, you know, all them years ago, they did build something that was really good. So last up is the 6D MAG light with the big drop in. Um, I think I bought this from a company called torchsite.co.uk. Uh, so it's a three mode drop in. I think it was rated at about a thousand lumens. Uh, again, this just fits into the original bulb holder. So if we just cycle it, we've got a couple of different modes here. So that's low and we go back to high. So we lose the focus, but to be honest, you know, it is sort of set up for optimum focus. Um, so is it a mag light still? Well, I suppose so. You know, it's a mag light body. Um, but yeah, you've, you've perhaps lost the uh, the characteristic uh, focus for it. But it means that it's a very, very usable modern light. Um, being an XML2, as you can see, we've got quite a good spill beam. It's quite bright. Um, but the reflector's quite large. So we're getting quite a good, you know, spot beam on it as well. Uh, and some quite good distance. You know, the beam's nice and clear. Uh, tint, eh, not too bad. Again, I think the camera flatters a little bit. Um, it's on the cooler side, um, but it's certainly no worse than most XML2s. Uh, you know, the downside to a, a 6D flashlight, they're huge, you know. Maybe I keep this for, for the novelty effect more than anything. Um, but, you know, the reality is I can put a small 18650 torch in my pocket, carry it all day and not know it's there, um, and still get similar performance to the, uh, to the 6D. Um, you know, so I keep all of these torches because they're, they're fun. So that kind of rounds up um, where we're at with it. Um, I say uh, the mag light range is huge. Um, I know they did quite a few modern LED torches up to around sort of, um, you know, 600 or 1,000 lumens. Um, the early mag LEDs, you know, sort of 180 lumens. Um, I don't think they do anything that's particularly different uh, in performance to what, what I've got here. Um, you know, I think the, 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 the AAA mini mags, I'd like to get a newer one. Um, it's not going to 
perform as well as this one does here with the uh, the lithium iron in. Um, but it would definitely perform a lot better um, than my old one with the drop in. Um, but yeah, I think the the XL two hundred really is is, is the uh, the crown of the bunch. Um, and then the modded maglite, uh, that that Cree MTG two. You know, it is just it is just a wonderful, wonderful torch of wonderful colour <laughs> and tint. Um, but again, they're still big. Um, I normally pocket carry something like a Convoy S2, um, you know, or or like along those lines. Um, today I'm sporting a, a Solar Force LM2. Um, a little bit chunky. It's got a bit bigger head on it. This one's got a, a slightly overdriven. Cree XPG2 running a, a Q light driver at about uh, three amps. Um, but here, I mean, this is this is this is what I mean about the mini mags. So here's here's my LED mini mag. Here's my eighteen six fifty light, and you know the Solar Force is quite a bit more chunky, but it's so much shorter, and I've got the ability to put on a deep carry pocket clip. Uh, and that just makes the world of difference. You know, I like to pocket carry these uh, in a jeans pocket. So, I don't know if you can sort of see. Just clipped into the uh, top of my pocket. Okay. Works brilliantly. Always got a torch on me, because you never know when you're going to need one. The mag light. Oh, what do you do with it? You, you sort of stick it in your pocket, but, it, you know, it, it slides about. You've got no clip. So, makes it really uncomfortable. You put it the wrong way around, you, you end up with the head of it sticking out your pocket. Um, you know, as I say, Maglite are a, an iconic torch, I think, for, for nearly everybody who loves torches. Um... But their modern range is just so hard to love because they're so hard to use and carry and make as a, an acceptable everyday sort of torch. Um, which is a shame. And I think in the UK, um, at least, mag lights are now expensive and hard to find. Uh, you don't see them on the shelf in that many shops. Uh, and the places that do have them, they are very expensive. Um, which is why when I was on holiday in Florida, I tra took my partner and traced round uh, many a brick and mortar store. Um, I think much to her amusement. Um, so we ended up in Home Depot where I bought this um, because at the time you couldn't get them in the UK. Uh, and if you did want to buy one, they were sort of horrendous money. Um, but you certainly wouldn't find one on the shelf anywhere. Um, I think the US market mag lights are still doing well. Uh, you know, and I, I wish them every every support and luck. Um, but definitely here in the UK, um, I, th I think they have almost vanished, um, you know, from sort of public perception. Um, you just don't see them on the shelf. So you have to know about them to go and buy them. And then you look at the prices and you think, Phew, I'm not going to do that, I'll buy something else. But still, I have a real fondness for them. Um, which is why I'm doing this video, really. Uh, I know many of you out there also enjoy mag lights as well. So it'd be great to see what you've got. Cheers.